Welcome to The Code, your guide to health and human performance. I'm your host, Dr. Andrew Fix from Physio Room, a performance-based rehab facility here in Denver. On this podcast, we're going to explore the key areas of your life that impact your overall health and wellness, from sleep hygiene and stress management to nutrition, movement, relationships, and more. We bring you conversations with industry experts and top performers to share strategies they have for cracking the code on health and human performance. Now let's get to today's show. What's going on, guys? Dr. Andrew Fix back from Physio Room for another episode here with you guys on the code. As I typically say, I really appreciate you guys being here and tuning in with us on this episode. Um, Hopefully, you find some benefit in this. And, you know, after we talk about the benefits of intentionally exposing yourself to some heat, whatever way you want to do that. Hopefully, uh, maybe you feel like going and hopping in the sauna, or maybe you feel like going and hopping in a hot tub or some way to do this. So before we get into it, um, just like we talked about on our episode with cold exposure and some of the benefits that you can get from that, what I made a point to do was absolutely reference Dr. Andrew Huberman's podcast on cold exposure, because that has a lot more details on the science behind the mechanisms of how these things happen in our body and why they happen in our body. I'm going to refer you to the exact same thing for this heat exposure episode. So Dr. Huberman uh, on the Huberman Lab podcast has an episode titled The Science in Health Benefits of deliberate heat exposure. looks like they used to have those episodes numbered, but um, I don't see the numbers on there anymore. Maybe those got taken off, but um, absolutely refer back to that one. That's going to have a lot more of the science and the data and really diving deep in the research articles on this topic. But what we're going to do on here is try to make this a bite-sized chunk for you guys, where we just sort of talk through what the benefits are, We're not going to dive into the research. We're just going to talk about what the research shows and, um, and please refer to that one if you want to. So let's kick it off. Are you someone that already uses saunas? Do you use saunas? Do you use hot tubs? Do you use some form of heat exposure? If so, throughout this episode, maybe you'll find, you know, are you using it the recommended amount and at the right temperature to get, take advantage of the health benefits that might come along with that? So generally speaking, exposing yourself to heat, uncomfortable heat, right? Like how hot does it need to be? We'll talk about that, but it needs to be uncomfortable. And what you can expect, generally speaking, what we see from heat exposure from saunas and whatnot is an improvement in our overall health. Um, Research articles actually show a reduction in what's called all-cause mortality. And that basically just means no matter what you die from, it could be anything, People that use saunas regularly compared to those who don't see a reduction in all-cause mortality. Uh, You can potentially have improvements in mood, positively adjust some of your hormone levels, and a lot of people use saunas and heat exposure because of perceived athletic performance and recovery benefits that you get from those things, and we'll talk about some of the reasons why. Um, Surprising to most, probably, what we talked about on the cold exposure episode, episode was that When you use an ice bath or expose yourself to extreme cold, the net effect on the body is actually that your core body temperature will warm up, will rise. Now that doesn't happen until a couple hours afterwards, but same thing here with the sauna, the net effect on your body, because your body is going to work hard to expel the heat afterwards is that your body temperature is going to reduce post the use of the sauna or whatever form of heat you're using. So post sauna cooling will take effect. So, um, you know, if, if you are having trouble sleeping or anything, it might be better to use this in the later half of the day, uh, because then your body temperature will cool down and typically having a slightly cooler body temperature is going to help us improve our ability to fall asleep. Now, one thing that I do uh, remember hearing in that episode that I listened to on the Huberman podcast was the just caution situations, like when to use caution when going in a sauna. And as you can imagine, these are not the populations of the people that are in any of those studies. But if someone is pregnant, or if they're a minor, I think they talked about younger than 16 years old, um, it's recommended that you not use the sauna, um, that this be reserved for healthy adults, uh, those that are not pregnant. And then 
um, there actually could be some reproductive considerations for males as well. Um, things that talked about potential reduction in sperm count and how it may take a hiatus from using the sauna for a month or two for that to rebound. So, um, if, you know, if you are trying to have children, um, maybe during that time is not the time to be prioritizing using the sauna, but maybe prioritize some other things in your, in your, your health. Now we've, I've already mentioned these, but we talked about ways to use heat exposure, ways that you can expose yourself to heat and saunas are probably the most common one. Of course, you've got dry saunas, you've got steam room type saunas. And uh, what's becoming more popular now is we've got infrared saunas. What's interesting is we at physio room, we actually have an infrared sauna in each one of our two clinic locations here in the Denver area. Um, but what some of the research talks about is it's, you know, it's not really proven you know, if there's any benefits to using an infrared sauna over your traditional, just heat, hot, dry sauna. Um, and what it seems like is some of these infrared saunas or most of them for that matter, they may not actually get hot enough for your body to really reap the positive benefits, or at least the full spectrum of the benefits that some of these, um, some of these things we're going to talk about because the sauna needs to be quite warm if you're going to use it and really try to get some of these positive effects from it, at least that's what was shown in the research articles to have statistical significancy. So what are the benefits? We talked about overall health, all cause mortality, whatnot, but the big major categories that it looks like the sauna will benefit you in the most is cardiovascularly with your mood, improving your mood, reduct, uh, reductions in stress, reducing your stress, and just an improvement in overall health as a result. And then there may be some significant growth hormone release effects from the sauna. And as we know, growth hormone can have positive improvements on our muscle building and repair, repair and strengthening of bones, improvements in tissue repair, and then uh, even improvements in metabolism. So, you know, why wouldn't you want that? Um, it's, it's probably not a shock to people listening to this that, you know, growth hormone is a commonly used performance enhancing drug. And when you hear about those potential benefits, uh, it's not surprising, not surprising that it is, um, you know, why people would want to use that because they definitely can see some effects uh, positively in how they play and perform. But one of the bigger ways that the sauna seems like it benefits us and I'm going to use sauna for heat exposure. Of course, you can, um, and the reason I'm going to talk about the sauna is because we have one. And when I expose myself to heat, that's what I'm doing. Uh, but now that I've dove more into it, it seems I might not be actually getting it hot enough. So hopefully I still get some of these benefits. But uh, of course, hot tubs and hot showers and things could be used as well um, if they're able to get, get you warm enough. Now, cardiovascular health is probably one of the areas where the benefits seem to be the highest. Um, and what's interesting, and if you've ever used a sauna that's particularly hot, you probably feel this. It feels similar to if you were doing kind of light cardiovascular exercise. Your heart rate's increasing. Your blood flow is, is increasing. Um, you're having vasodilation. You may even see some veins. Now, part of that could be because of dehydration being in the sauna, but you get similar effects to that of which you would if you were doing cardiovascular exercise. Now, in order for that to take place, the sauna, like I said, needs to be really warm because it needs to make it challenging for you to be in there, challenging your respiratory system, challenging your body to try and cool itself down because of the hot, hot environment, right? Imagine what your body would be doing if you were in like the middle of a desert. Your body would be trying really hard to cool itself down and to not overcome or to overcome the heat, the environment that you're in. So what the studies talk about, uh, this is really hot, you guys, is that in order for some of these benefits to peak, that sauna needs to be 80 to 100 degrees Celsius, or for those of us who tend to measure things in Fahrenheit, like myself, that's 176 to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, just a little bit below the, you know, the level that water would boil at. That's really hot. And the highest number I've ever seen on the infrared sauna in our clinic is 150. Um, now, maybe there's some benefit to infrared over, over just a regular heat sauna, but um, it doesn't quite get hot enough based on those numbers. So 175 plus degrees is what it looks like we need to reap some of these benefits from a cardiovascular standpoint. And 
when you break down, you know, how long you should be in there, it looks like a range of somewhere between five and 20 minutes, a couple times a week, two to three times a week. You could even do this more often, but wanting to get multiple sessions of five to 20 minutes a week to see some of these cardiovascular benefits. And what's cool is, you know, there've been studies that show, and they reference some of these in that other podcast, people that use the sauna more are less likely to die from cardiovascular disease or cardio cardiovascular, uh, you know, negative events, heart attacks and things. Um, of course, a lot of people may have family histories of those things. So if there's just one extra little thing that's not, you know, too invasive or too difficult to accomplish, um, maybe why wouldn't you want to do that to potentially benefit your health and decrease any risk of issues down the road? Now, when we start talking about improvements in mood, um, you know, this is one, I don't necessarily feel this when I'm in the sauna, um, that I have an improvement in mood. I would say that I usually feel better afterwards after I use, use the sauna. Um, cause I'm a little uncomfortable when I'm in there, you know, sweating a lot, but what it just looks like the general theme here is, is that exposing yourself to the heat causes chemical mediators to be released within our body and within our bloodstream, things like endorphins. And, um, as a result of that, we may experience an increase or an improvement in our mood following because of the circulating in our bloodstream of these endorphins and the effects that they have on the body. So just keep that in mind if you're using the sauna, um, or if you're, you find yourself in a bad mood, maybe use the sauna, see if that doesn't help as opposed to some of the other things that people may do, um, you know, maybe drinking or, or whatever, um, to improve their mood if, or do if they're in a bad mood, um, this would be a lot better for your health, of course. Um, now, the area that I probably use the sauna for the most when I heard that this is one of the benefits, that's pretty much when I started using the sauna, was on the heat's ability to cause reduction in stress or improvement in our stress response and just improve our overall health. Um, so over time, what it seems like happens or can happen as a result of sauna use is a reduction in cortisol levels. Cortisol being a stress hormone in our body that uh, most of us probably know what it feels like when we are very stressed out. Uh, you may have higher cortisol levels at that time. It's been shown to have reduction in cortisol levels from repeated use of heat exposure. So that's pretty cool. Um, an increase in the activation of DNA repair and chemical mediators in our body that are responsible for the repair of tissue. Um, and what I know from reading some other studies about DNA repair and DNA breakdown over time is that has a huge effect on our longevity. And the more that you can keep those DNA molecules maintaining their shape, repairing and not breaking down, the less it appears that we experience what we think of as aging and we're able to age more gracefully, be more active and more functional into the later years of our life. So that's pretty cool. And then something that I've heard, uh, you know, on in Instagram, social media and whatnot is this, these things called heat shock proteins. And I definitely wouldn't um, claim to be an expert on these, but what it looks like repeated use of the sauna and heat exposure can do for us is activate these things that are called heat shock proteins. And the main benefit that those may provide our body is on a cellular level with repair tissue and repair benefits on a cellular level. And as we know, all of the tissues and whatnot in our body are made up of millions and millions and millions of cells. And um, how we function at a cellular level can definitely impact how we function on a more macro and grand global level. So slight difference in uh, the protocol that I remember reading about um, for this was, you know, to use the sauna for at least 57 minutes or an hour a week. Um, but with the recommendation being to split that up over multiple days. So the way I look at that is we talked about for a cardiovascular benefit, using the sauna 175 plus degrees for five to 20 minutes, two to three times a week or multiple times a week could be more. So if you want to cut, try to combine these things together because the, the temperature has, um, needs to be the same to get these stress and heat shock pro protein effects is if you're going to use the sauna to try and accomplish both these things, try to use the sauna over multiple sessions for a combined at least an hour a week. So that could be three times for 20 minutes. 
or four times for 15 minutes or 20 or, or however you want to break that up, whatever your schedule and um, your finances and everything like that allow. Um, but you can kind of accomplish both these, check both those boxes at the same time as the cardiovascular and the reduction in stress, which is kind of cool. Now let's fast forward or, or rewind back to growth hormone. Cause we, we briefly touched on it before what growth hormone does and can do, but we didn't talk about it from a sauna standpoint. So you can have an improvement in the release or an increase in the release of growth hormone with repeated use of the sauna. However, the difference being with this one is it looks like it's more effective if you use the sauna for longer periods of time on a less frequent basis. So for example, using the sauna for 30 minutes, multiple times in a day with some time in between and bonus points. If you, during those rest periods in between, do some cold exposure, you may remember that, or you'll hear about it later, depending on when this comes out. Um, on an episode with my friend Eric Hinman. This is a protocol that he follows is heat and cold, heat and cold contrasted back and forth in the same day, most days of the week. And I know this is one of the main benefits or main reasons, excuse me, that he does it is to try to ex you know, exploit this benefit um, to benefit him in his training, in his repair and his recovery. So if you're unfamiliar, growth hormone is something that we all have generally it is released and is higher in our bodies at night, you know, while we're sleeping, while we're recovering, that makes sense. While we're sleeping is, is, you know, when our body is trying to recover the most, but over time, as we age, we naturally have less growth hormone. So potentially using heat exposure, it looks like is a way that you can kind of take advantage of getting more of that released and see maybe less of a reduction as we age. Um, and as we talked about, it can have all sorts of benefits for our body, including muscle size and growth, bone strengthening, which we know resistance training can cause strengthening of bones as well. That's called Wolf's Law or Wolf's Principle. Um, repair of tissues, such as muscles and everything else, and then improvements in our metabolism. All right. So I just talked for a while on that, but let's do a quick recap and then... You know, let me just tell you how I've tried to implement this with, you know, we all have busy lives, busy work, family lives, whatever it is. And, um, you know, I don't expect everybody listening to this to one, have access to a sauna and two, be able to do this like every day. So as I mentioned, we have an infrared sauna in both of our clinic locations here at Physio Room. And what I've done is I've tried to take at least one, preferably two days a week, get the sauna turned on so that it can warm up before I actually get in there. And then when I'm done with work for the day or right after my workout, if I have, you know, if I have a little bit of a break before I start treating clients again or getting back into work in the afternoon, hopping in the sauna for approximately 30 minutes. I've just been trying to accomplish that you know, 57 minutes or one hour a week since I listened to the Huberman podcast several months back. And, um, you know, what the way that I've been able to fit that in my schedule the most is two sessions as opposed to three um, for just a little bit longer at a time because then I have to hop in the sauna fewer times per week. And then I have been unable to combine that with immediate cold exposure, like back and forth. But as you guys heard on my episode or our episode, about cold exposure, I've been hopping in an ice bath that I use frozen water bottles to cool the water um, in our garage multiple times a week, usually three times a week for five to 10 minutes um, per time. And that lately I've been getting that down to right around the 50 degree, 50 degree point. So, um, you know, I'm going to try to find if there's a way I can improve the heat of the sauna, since I read some of these things that talk about 176 plus 175 plus degrees, wonder how I might be able to increase the temperature of the saunas that I'm using. But if you have access to a hot tub, you may be able to accomplish some of these benefits. If you're going to a fitness club, rec center, gym of some sort, and it has a steam room or a steam sauna, I'm not quite sure the temperature of that, but it may behoove you to, to use that occasionally. And then, you know, there are a lot of other places popping up, sports recovery type of places, 
um, restore hyper wellness. Again, you may hear Eric Hinman talking about that. And um, these are types of places that have cold exposure, cryotherapy, heat, sauna, whatnot as well, contrast baths that you might be able to use. So hopefully you found some of the information in this episode beneficial for you. I'm sorry if it felt like I was rambling at the, about this, you guys. I'm a little bit passionate about it. Um, I just did a sauna session a few days ago, and talking about this kind of just re-motivated me to try and continue with my routine of getting in there at least twice a week, trying to reap some of these benefits because all of these things we talked about, you know, I'm so much more about trying to be proactive in our health and try to optimize things from the get-go because the quality of the life that you live is going to be so much higher as a result of that. So, you know, go out there, hop in the sauna. If you've never used our sauna at Physio Room and you're one of our clients or somebody here locally listening to this, please just shoot us a message, shoot me a message and uh, ask how you can get in there and we'll we'll let you come in and try out the sauna and see what you think about it. But again, for all you guys listening to us on the code, again, I really appreciate your time being spent with us and tuning into this episode. If you've not done so already, again, I would really, really appreciate it if you would take just a moment or two of your time to leave us a review, share some some things that you like about the show, potentially ask us for other topics that you want to hear about, and I will make sure to try and um, record an episode or find someone who's an expert in that to interview them and get that here on the show as well. Look forward to seeing you guys next time on The Code. Have an awesome day.